Hi everyone, it's Jessica, the Schoolhouse Stitcher, and welcome to a special edition floss tube video. Um, in my last video, I uh, showed my storage solution for my finished projects, uh, the Art Portfolio, um, which holds my projects um, in, you know, a neat, compact form until I am ready to finally finish them, whether that's by framing or sewing or what have you. Uh, when I showed these, I had a lot of people comment that they would like to see what is in the portfolio. Uh, so today I'm going to take you on a finish parade. Uh, I'll show you mostly things like this that, again, have not made it into their finally finished form, uh, but also a few finally finished objects. Because sometimes I do finish things. Um, I'm hoping I'll get a little bit better at that now that I have my sewing machine out and available. I don't have to dig it out of the closet. Uh, I don't have to go through a huge ordeal to set it up. It's there. It's ready to go. So hopefully I'll get a, you know, a few more finished objects under my belt soon. Uh, but let's see. We're going to start. Uh, these are going to be in no particular order because I tend to just find a blank page in the portfolio and stuff them in there. So they're not... Um, in order by date and I also do not remember I remember the the designer and the project name for a lot of these but not all of them um, so for the ones I don't remember I'm gonna try to insert it along the bottom or in the description box below so that uh, you know if there's anything that you're interested in you'll know who the designer is what the project name is uh, if it came from a magazine what issue it's from or if it came from a book what the title of the book is I have all that information available, it's just on my phone, which is right here, filming me. Uh, so again, I'll put that down below or in the description box. All right, so to start off with, I have a little Mill Hill ornament. Um, this is, and it is finally finished. I haven't backed it with anything because I'm not sure I would like to back it with felt or wool but I don't use glue on my pieces like never so I'm not going to glue anything down there um, and I haven't yet decided if I want to take the time to sew something around it um, or if I just want to leave it as is I'm pr let's be real I'm probably just gonna leave it as is uh, anyway this is Mill Hill this is grandpa's tractor I think this is technically a magnet kit um, but I just use the extra beads to create a hanger for that. Um, I had to do this one when I got it because my grandpa um, had a little red tractor uh, that looked very much like this one, uh, minus the bling. Uh, so I had to I had to do that. And this is a this will be a Christmas ornament. Right now it's out because I didn't feel like pulling down my Christmas ornament stuff to put it away. Um, but when we do decorate for Christmas then after we pack stuff up, it'll go back in the box. Uh, but again, Grandpa's Tractor by Mill Hill. Oops. Very blingy. Uh, this is another perforated paper ornament. This is not by Mill Hill. This is an ornament from a Christmas book, um, like one of those Better Homes and Gardens or you know, something like that. And I really like 12 Days of Christmas stuff, so I had to do the partridge and the pear tree. Uh, when I finished it, I just found some random beads in my stash and made an ornament out of it. This was a super quick project. It only took a couple of days to do. Um, I will try to find the name of the book and insert that down below. I no longer have the book. This was the only design I wanted to stitch out of it because the rest were very 80s, early 90s looking. Not really my taste, but this one was was timeless and super cute so he's another one who's waiting for the Christmas ornaments to come down so that he can be put away um, this next one is not quite finally finished um, I do not remember the designer's name this is from a just cross stitch ornament issue it's on the cover you probably you might not recognize it from the cover though because I changed every single color in this. The original one is something like red and it's on a bright green fabric maybe, like a lime green. It's, it's pretty wild. <laughs> I like something a little more subdued 
So I changed this to a nice like blue, um, you know, kind of a, a blue gray color. Um, I made this more of a, a chocolate, light chocolate brown. Um, he has a deep orange nose. And then this is again uh, a variegated floss. And then I just put a little charm up here. He has not been, here's the back. And again, because I don't use glue, I lace these pieces together. Um, so these are pieces of mat board with some padding on it. And I laced the fabric onto the mat board and then laced the two together with a, a ladder stitch. Um, that is tedious to do. It's not the easiest thing to do, but I have seen way too many of my childhood crafts uh, from the 80s and the early 90s that use glue and you pull them out of the box at Christmas time and they're disgusting and pieces are falling off and it's, I, I can't deal. <laughs> I have to use archival stuff. Um, this, I was thinking, I have this twine, so I was thinking I was gonna use that, like sew that down around the border. Uh, I'm not quite sure yet. And if I do that, then I'll just loop it at the top to make a hanger. Um, but he is, he is waiting for me to make a decision on that and also waiting for me to have a time when I just feel like doing the little hand sewing um, because like I said, it can get a little finicky um, and these are, uh, there's not a lot of give in these edges so it can take a bit of time. Um, but I'll put that information below so that you'll know which issue of the Just Cross Stitch Ornament magazine you can find that in. Like I said, I drastically changed the colors and I don't really remember which colors I used, but if I can find that information, I'll include that below as well. All right. This one you've seen on a previous video. Uh, this is the Lady Liberty by Blackbird Designs. Which it has the alphabet and the flag. Uh, the beautiful banners. stars that line up. Uh, the top has uh, the lady holding her needle and stitching your initial for the year I finished it, which is 2016. Another flag over here. Um, and as I mentioned in my previous video, this one I sewed together entirely by hand. I stuffed it with crushed walnut shells. Um, it's not completely solid. It does have like you know, you see a little bit of give there. Um, I probably could have stuffed it a little bit firmer, uh, but not just using crushed walnut shells. It's really, really hard to get that like drum tight finish if you're just using those. Because at some point you reach, you kind of reach a point where you can't fit anymore in there because they're gonna spill out all over the table and it's a huge mess. Uh, but anyway, Lady Liberty by Blackbird Designs. This is now available as a leaflet. I got it as a club kit from the Dying to Stitch Ladies Prim Society. Uh, another club kit from Dying to Stitch. This is Scarlet House Button Posies. Um, backed with polka dot fabric. Uh, my corners are a little bit pointy. But at least they're solid, except that one. I could not get that one to stuff to save my life. Uh, this uses some, um, the called for aerodide fibers, and then I substitute, they gave you, they gave me buttons with the kit uh, through Dying to Stitch, but um, I lied. This is not Ladies Prim Society, this is their Colonial Gatherings Club. Colonial Gatherings has Scarlet House and Plum Street Samplers. Ladies Prim has Blackbird Designs and Heartstring Sampling. Uh, but anyway, Colonial Gatherings Club. Um, they gave us buttons with the kit. They were all uniform. I didn't like that, so I substituted buttons from my grandma's button box, um, which I usually try to do with anything that calls for buttons just because I think it gives it a nice little personal touch. Um, I think this one, this one sits on a shelf which kind of presses it down. So I think that's why it's a little not perfect at the bottom. Sorry, Vanna. Uh, 
Again, Scarlet House Button Posies. And to go with that one, it also had a tiny little scissor fob. Uh, I have stitched that. I have not finished it. This is the backing fabric. Um, so I need to sew that together. Yet another Colonial Gatherings Club. This is Plum Street Samplers Hurt Not the Earth. Uh, this is now available as a leaflet as well. Um, so is the Button Posies. I should have mentioned that. I really, really enjoyed stitching this one. This is the whole reason I joined the Colonial Gatherings Club because I saw this and I had to have it. I just loved the flowers. Um, I stitched mine vertically so that uh, the variegation would carry that way. Um, and I backed it using the fabric that they provided and the chenille trim. Um, stuffed the heck out of it and then flattened it from the back with an iron so that it would be a little sturdier. This one was really hard to stuff because it's so long. I it just, I don't know. I had trouble with it. And I can look at it now and I'm like, oh, it looks crooked, but it sets up on a shelf. It's fine. It's beautiful. Plum Street Samplers, Hurt Not the Earth. Uh, this other one you've also seen. This is Summer House Stitch Works and uh, Love and Stitches. Um, their little pouch. That was for the Prim Stitchers Society Retreat. Liberty and Freedom on one side. This cute little scissor motif on the other. And 2017 to mark the date of the retreat. And it's just a little drawstring pouch. Alright, now we're going to get into the not finally finished objects. There are many, many more of these. <laughs> uh, this first one is by Threadwork Primitives. This is the All in Bloom Thread Keep. Uh, this one, I have all the materials needed to, it's going to be laced around um, a mat board. And then, oh, I have a picture. It'll be laced around a mat board and then these little rings will go at the bottom for a thread keep. So, that is super cute. Uh, this one is Lizzie Kate's A Little Gray Hair. This I'm going to finish in an egg shape uh, as she shows on the cover of the chart using the backing fabric that was provided in the kit, which is this. I also, oh, I have this random, I really need to do something with this. I have this random little reindeer ornament and I can't I did this in college I remember doing this my sophomore year in college um, because I had just visited a needlework store for the first time and I found this booklet of like little ornament patterns and it was cheap and so I got it hard in hand maybe I can't remember I'll put it I'll put it here um, or in the description box depending uh, but look, just a little, very simple, very basic reindeer guy. I think I was practicing stitching on linen and stitching with, I think this was my first project with over dye floss. So I think I was practicing the linen and the, uh, yeah, stitching one stitch at a time with, with over dyes, um, because this was the first project I ever stitched with this, I believe. But that's very old, and he has hung out in the to-be-finished pile for far too long. Um, a couple other things that have been in my pile for a long time. Right now I'm working through the box of random stuff that is too small um, to fit into the portfolios, or I just don't have space in the portfolios. Uh, this was with, I think, a World of Cross Stitching Kit or um, issue or something like that. It's just a little simple Winnie the Pooh ornament. 
I have no idea what I'm going to do with this because I don't have kids. I don't display Winnie the Pooh stuff. I might just finish it and give it to my niece or something. I don't even know if she likes Winnie the Pooh. She's a, she's two. She, I doubt she knows who Winnie the Pooh is at this point. But anyway, that's finished. And this is by, I think it's called um, Textile Heritage or something like that. They do a lot of um, kits from the UK, uh, bookmarks and things like this, which this is supposed to go in here as a little card. I'm not going to do that. I'm probably going to make it into a scissor fob or something. Um, but this is the, the um, thistle that my husband brought me back. He went to Scotland the summer after our freshman year of college and he brought me back this kit and another kit um, that's in, that I've also finished, but that's in with my Christmas stuff. Um, it was a daffodil bookmark and I made it into a, a Christmas ornament because I'm not gonna use that as a bookmark. Uh, so I thought that was super sweet of him to bring you back cross stitch stuff, but you know, a 19 year old guy bringing you back cross stitch is pretty amazing. So I love that. And I really want to finish that so I can display it somewhere because it's sweet. All right. I have a couple of, these are kits by Janlin. These are stitched on plastic canvas. Um, I need to put them together. Again, I was waiting to see if I wanted to back them with felt or something. I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm just going to sew this together and put a hanger on it and call it good. Um, but this is a little bear ornament. I got this kit at Michael's years and years and years ago. Um, they had a whole series of them. So I only got two. I think there were maybe four in the series. Um, and I got two. I got the one with the horn and I got the one with the wreath. So. As you can see, some of these need very little work, like far less than an hour of work to put together and have them ready for display. I just, you know, I'd rather be stitching. All right, this next one you've also seen. Let me see if I can get it in here. Four Seasons, Marjolin Vestin. Stitched on 28 count, so it's enormous. I started this one summer of 2004, right before my senior year of college, and I finished it uh, probably 2011, 2010, somewhere around there. Um, but I wasn't stitching on it the whole time. Another one you've also seen before is Lavender and Lace's Nantucket Rose, which lots of people are stitching on now for the stitch along. It's run by Dina at Half Stitch Cross Stitch. Uh, I left her, I stitched her exactly as called for, and I had purchased a kit from Hobby Lobby. So the shades in the green are not as apparent um, as they are in some others that I have seen. But I really like her. I want to get her framed and hang her in our bedroom. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with the Four Seasons thing. I might get it framed. I might just leave it in the box. I don't know. It depends. For having a really big, like, 13 and a half foot ceilings here, we actually don't have a lot of wall space to hang things on because we have um, so many windows and doors. Uh, so we have very few places where we can actually hang frame things to display. This next one was one of my favorites to stitch. This is the Drawn Threads Sampler Game Board.
and as you can see, I stitched this in 2011. This was so much fun to stitch. I stitched it on, I'm pretty sure that this is the called for fabric. I think it's a 28 or a 25 count, um, like raw or something. I don't know. I just, they had it pre-cut, so I just picked it up. Um, but every house is different, it has a different tree, a different roof, different lawn. I just love stitching this. There were some moments when I thought this is never going to end because there are so many squares. Um, but it did. This one I really want to, I really want to frame this one because I love, I love looking at those little houses. push the stitch back into place. That's what happens when you leave it in a box for six years. Sometimes things get a little off kilter. The next one is Lizzie Kate's Halloween ABC or ABC Halloween, something like that. Uh, this came as a kit with the pattern and the floss after overdides and some DMC. Sorry, let me give you the full view. And we'll give it a close up. Um, lots of cute little motifs in this one. Skeleton, witch, lots of candy corn. I love the colors in this one. It's very vibrant. I think it's perfect for Halloween. Um, this was stitched on, hmm. Maybe Copper Penny? Wachelt? Copper Penny by Wachelt, maybe. Uh, as a 32 count. Um, I'll have to look that up and see if I have it written down. Um, I have a, I bought this fabric during uh, the great 75% off clearance event when the stitch store in Buford was going out of business. Um, so I think I just got like an entire yard of it and have stitch or have kitted up lots of different projects with that. All right, that is the end of the box of random things. So now we'll go through the smalls. This first one is Country Cottage Needleworks. It's like Snow and Love, I think, something like that. Um, I remember buying this pattern at was it Spring Robin in Salisbury, North Carolina, which sadly is no longer in business. Um, but I remember she asked if I wanted the fabric. Well, how much is the fabric? And she threw out some ridiculous pry, like a dollar fifty or something. Yeah, yeah, I'll get the fabric. <laughs> I got the little button to um, to put in there. That was a quick stitch. Love that. That one is again just waiting on me to lace it around the shit because I do want to. I think I do want to make that um, arch shape ornament for that. Uh, so it's just waiting on me to get to there. This one was a special kit for the Prim Stitcher Society by Summerhouse Stitchworks. She had a bunch of these kits um, that came with different um, uh, vintage nine patch. These are hand sewn, very old fabrics. The reason that this is in here instead of being finished is you see the problem. There's there's no seam allowance on this. Uh, the problem is that the kit was supposed to have 
32 count linen. This is a week's linen. I got to stitching it. I look at it. I'm like, that doesn't, that looks kind of tight. I don't think that's going to fit. So I got out a fabric counter. It's 30 count. There's 30 count weeks, not 32. So the design was too big to fit. I am not going to stitch that again. So I think what I'm going to do is get some kind of fabric um, that coordinates reasonably well, or maybe even just get strips of linen. Um, I think that would look good. And sew them onto this to give me something that will have a seam allowance. Um, so it'll look something like that. And that way this will, it'll make this piece big enough for me to attach it to this. And then get a piece of fabric to sew in the back. Uh, it did come with a backing fabric, um, which was fortunately was not a vintage piece like this. Uh, but again, because this is 30 count instead of 32, the backing fabric is too small. So I was kind of disappointed in that. Um, it was one of my many, many trials with Weeks Linen, which We'll talk about later because there are more. All right, this is the one I showed last time. This is JBW Designs um, ABC pumpkin, something like that. Uh, but I stitched this several years ago on just a random, I think this is a 28 count raw or natural, something like that, uh, by Zweigart using the called for Overday Floss. We have a random little iris. I'm pretty sure that this was a kit. Uh, in fact, I know this was a kit. I bought it at ABC, um, ABC Darius in Marietta, um, which also sadly is no longer in business. We have no stitch stores around here anymore. Um, but that was a pretty quick, easy stitch. I don't remember the designer. Um, I'll try to see if I have that information elsewhere. We have a random little kit from Walmart. I started this my senior year in high school, 2001. Um, I think I was going to make it for a friend and then ended up deciding not to do that. Um, so I didn't finish this until about 2007, 2007 or 2008. Um, because I remember I would stitch on it at work and finish it up there but I don't I don't remember who the designer is uh, it's just a, it was like a 97 cent kit from Walmart or something this was one of the Teresa Winsler uh, white work ornaments this is a freebie on her website um, this I stitched in college when I was trying to learn how to do specialty stitches and and I don't remember what kind of floss this is, but it uses only one strand. Uh, my, these stitches are kind of sad and pitiful, but you know, it was a learning piece, which is probably why it's never been finished into an ornament, because now I look at it and I'm like, ah, I could do so much better than that. Uh, but I also used the remaining floss to do a random little freebie ornament. I do not remember who the designer is for this one. Um, yeah. I don't know who the designer is, but I thought that was super cute. And that looks a little bit better because it only has the one specialty stitch in the middle. Rhodes Heart. We have Primitive Hair, Love Never Fails. The original, I think it has a random like 1800 date here or something. I just changed it to my anniversary. Um, stitch with one color of overdyed floss on just a random scrap of linen. I think this is a, this is 30 count by R and R, so it's probably creme brulee because <laughs> uh, I had a ton of that. This was for a stitch along through the Creme Stitchers Society, um, so lots of people ended up stitching that one. We have Little House Needleworks. It's snow cold. 
It calls for a snowflake to go up here. I was going to see if I could find a charm because I did not like the snowflake as charted. Um, this was a ton of white stitched on a week's linen. So it was not super fun to stitch. I would not stitch it on week's linen were I doing it over. Um, but it looks cute. This was a um, chart by, um, I can't remember, Stacy Nash, no, not Forgotten Farm, Lori Breck, I think it was Lori, um, but this was just a little chart for the 2016 Prim Citrus Society that we got in our gift bag, so I stitched that up, and we'll do something with it. We have Little House Needleworks All Is Calm ornament. I substituted beads for the uh, their random stitches because I did not feel like doing um, pin stitch. Yeah. So there's that. Also on, I ended up with just a lot of random, all of these are just done on scraps from my stash, so I have no idea what kind of fabric this is um, or who made it. I just try to use every tiny little scrap so if there was a little corner oh I can make an ornament out of that um, that also had a second ornament that went with it this bless her home so stitched on the same linen same threads um, stitched at the same time as the other one we have Lizzie Kate's ABC I got this kit, so this came as a kit with the chart, the beads, and a fabric, not this fabric. The fabric it came with was like blue, which I felt looked kind of weird, so I substituted yellow. But I got the kit for a dollar because an online store had a clearance section um, and had it listed as like, please, please buy this and take it away from me. I was like, yes, yes I will, thank you. Um, I substituted, this is a Silk Weaver Solo that I bought, I bought this my sophomore year of college because I remember it was my first ever hand dyed fabric. It's not really showing up very well here. It's a little more yellow than what you're seeing. That doesn't particularly help. Anyway, but the cover photo is done on yellow fabric, and I thought that looked much cuter than the blue. So. Not quite sure what I'll do with that. Scissor fob, needle book, something like that. Hmm. And this next one. This is Lottie Da's Primitive Hair. This will eventually be cut out and made into a stand-up bunny, like the cover photo. I had a lot of problems with this kit. A lot of problems with this kit. First of all, it was a special, it was like a limited edition kit through Market. And when I saw it, I thought, I love that bunny. I have to have that bunny. It's so cute. And it's a limited edition kit. So I'm, you know, I'm going to buy it. I'm going to pre order it. First time I've ever pre ordered things from Market. I just, I really want to have to have it. Well, I bought it. And it came, and as you can see, you know, it's really small, which is fine. Um, this was not a cheap kit. These are all DMC threads. This is the size of the linen you got. So good luck to you stitching over here on the bunny butt, because I had to pull out a, I, like, you can't use a Q-snap for that. I had to pull out the smallest hoop I have um, so that I could get into the corner and even then I would have like this little thing stick up. So that was super annoying. It's Weeks Linen, which I really do not like. I had a hard time stitching on this. Um, I had to stitch part of it in hand because I couldn't get the, the hoop like even down here. So it hurt my hand. There's one place where I had stitched all the way around this um, the outline of the bunny 
and I got like down here to his foot and realized that one of my stitches was done over one thread instead of two threads. Um, you can tell where I compensate for that. Sorry, my horrible nails. Uh, like right here. One of them goes in the wrong hole. But at that point, I was just like, mm, I'm done. Nope. Not doing that again. Not ripping anything out. He's good. If you're looking that closely at his toe, step away from my bone. Um, but yeah, he was just a real pain. So he has been in the portfolio because he's in timeout until I can look at him without just feeling like I want to rip him down the middle. Oh, and to add insult to injury, after I stitched this, um, she said that there was such a good response to this kit at the market that she was going to sell it as a leaflet like a month after it came out at market. So I could have paid $12 and just gotten a leaflet and done it on whatever linen I wanted to. I could have done it on whatever linen I wanted to anyway, but when you spend like $35 or more for some DMC and a little scrap and a chart, you kind of want don't want to waste that, that little scrap. So Clearly, the money still needs to be in timeout. We're going to give him, I finished him back in like, May or June, I think he needs a few more months before he can come out of timeout because I'm, I'm still kind of mad at him. Mm. Alright, next one. This is by Chartmakers, I believe. This is like Phoebe Brown, I think. It's one of the Tombstone Angels. Um, this is still available through... Yeah. Oops. I didn't tuck a thread. Whoopsie. Um, I'll put, I didn't tuck two threads. What was I thinking? Okay. <laughs> we'll put this in a different pile so I can fix that. Um, this chart makers is no longer, um, is no longer designing. It was a, um, partnership between Kathy Barrett and Ann Brown, good housewife. Um, but I believe this one is still available through Carriage House Sampling's website. So, or, um, yeah, Carriage House Sampling's, I think, or Kathy Berry's website. One of those. Um, a lot of these, these chart makers, angels are available there for like, I don't know, $8, $10, something like that. Uh, so if, if you like those designs, you can check out that. This is a Lizzie Kate design, Happy Holidays. This was from a book, like one of those Better Homes and Gardens books. Um, so I stitched that one up, super quick stitch. I did change the house color because the called for color was um, very close to my linen that I chose. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that it would, it would stand out. Um, I think everything else is as charted, though. So. We have another, I went through my Lizzie Kate period. We had another Lizzie Kate, Double Double Toil and Trouble. Um, this was a design from Just Cross Stitch. Um, I will try to remember to put which issue down below. That was super quick. And yet another Lizzie Kate. Um, this one was stitched using partly DMC and partly overdyed. I used overdyed for the letters, um, the orange and the black. And then this one, Boo to You, was stitched using all DMC. And this is, this is another one of those designs. This is the same fabric uh, that I used for the Halloween ABC. It's going to show up a lot. We have another Ladies Prim Society kit from Dying to Stitch. This is by Blackbird Designs. Uh, Summer Garden, I believe. Yeah, I think. 
it calls for this to be a, they finished this as a thread keep. Um, so they cut out the arch shape and then put like uh, thread rings down here. I don't think I'm gonna do that, but I'm not entirely sure how I'm gonna finish this, which is why it's in the, the portfolio. This one has not been released as a, um, it has not been released to the public and I have already sold my chart. Sorry. Uh, this is Blackbird Design's Sewing Bird Pocket. This was again from the Ladies Prim Society. Uh, this one has been released as a leaflet, so you can purchase this. Um, I left out, he had some thread in his mouth. He had some wonky pins down here. I left those out, I just didn't care for them. Um, so I just added like another one of these star motifs up here and called it good. If you stitch this one, do not do what I did and leave everything except that giant bird for the end, or leave the, the giant bird for the end. Don't do that. I was stitching red for days. It took forever. I was so sick of red by the time I finished up. Work it in gradually. You know, do a length of, of red here and there while you stitch on other things. Don't leave all the red to the end. All right, we have, I think this is called True Love. This is by Nikki's Creations. It was in a just cross stitch issue. I started that this year for the magazine stitch along and managed to finish it. We also have, I believe this is the little stitcher. It's like Winter Walk um, or Walking Woods. I think it's Winter Walk. Uh, but this was another one, also from just cross stitch. Also um, started for the magazine stitch along this year and finished this year. Okay, we're getting toward the end of portfolio one. This is the With I Needle and Thread, like Summer Ort Basket, something like that. Some Ort Basket. It's the one that came out at market this year and it went on, goes on the little wicker basket. And it's super cute and I stitched it. Um, I was really excited to find this scrap piece of 40 count parchment um, by a store. It was labeled, it had a little sticker that said 40 count parchment stapled onto it so I bought it because it was super cheap and I'm stitching it and I look at the basket and I think this looks awfully big to go in that little basket so once again I pull out my trusty fabric ruler this is 36 count not 40 count it will not fit on the basket lid I will have to stitch it again I was like, I think I did that much, the burden all those berries when I realized it, and I was about to chuck it in the trash. My husband's like, no, no, don't throw it away, finish it, I'll keep it. You know, you can you can frame it and give it to me, just please don't throw it away. So, I don't know if he actually wanted it or if he just thought I'd regret it later, but I finished it, I kept it, I'll do something with it later after it. It's also in timeout, um, and I just haven't. I have not felt like stitching it again. I will eventually, but not right now. All right, this is the 2017 Prim Stitchers Society design by Teresa Maloney. Delaney Woods Treasures, I think is her name. Um, Anyway, I just used, uh, we got the fabric, we got the pattern, we got the floss. I used buttons from my grandma's button box to decorate that. And I'll probably make that into some kind of little bag or something. Oh my gosh, seriously? Uh, there's another one where I did not tuck in my threads. Uh, this is from the uh, Ladies Perm Society. This is by Heartstring Samplery. Stars and Stripes Forever Stocking. Uh, this is all in metallic, the gold and silver, chronic. I had some problems with this kit. Like I ran out of, I completely ran out of metallic, um, which is why my 
uh, fireworks here and here are red and blue instead of silver and gold. The instructions said to use two strands of metallic, so that's what I did. Um, but I, I don't know if that was a mistake or if they accidentally only gave you enough for one. But yeah, I completely ran out, so I had to improvise. But that's okay. I actually, I like it. I like it better that way. And if I had to do it over, I wouldn't use metallics at all. I would just use like a gold-colored um, floss for that. Okay, we have hit the bottom of the little one. And these are most of my finishes. There are some that are uh, in put away with Christmas decorations and such. Uh, so they will not make an appearance right now. These are really, a lot of these are really old. This is from... I stitched this while I was in college. Some, I think it was a DMC kit. Uh, if you have this kit in your stash and you were thinking of starting it, check the size of your Ada. It actually had a border that went around here. If I had done that border, I think I would have had about that much. I think it would come down to about there. Um, but the border was kind of eh, ugly anyway. So I just stitched this part. I stitched that for... My husband, um, now husband, boyfriend at the time, and I just never finished it. I don't even know if I even gave it to him. I think I showed it to him. I was like, look, I stitched a lighthouse for you. I'm going to put it in a box now. All right. Oh, this has a date on it. I finished this on July 17, 2002. This is Teresa Wentzler's Petite Unicorn. Okay, so this is a lovely design. This was the first Teresa Wentzler I ever stitched. I stitched it on 18 count Ada. No. Don't do that to yourself. If you're gonna stitch it on Ada, don't stitch it on anything smaller than 16 because these fractional stitches are a bear on 18 count. I mean, if you look at it, it looks so bumpy and horrible. So don't do that to yourself. Use, use 14 or 16 count if you're going to use Ada. Um, but yeah, I was young. I found this leaflet at Walmart um, before I knew that we had cross-stitch stores um, nearby and I was just like wow I've never seen anything like that the only other things I've seen have been you know teddy bears and um, Jesus and I like Jesus I didn't really want to cross stitch Jesus uh, but I saw this and I was like oh that's so cool so I bought it and that's kind of what introduced me from there I found a Teresa Wentzler's website and the Teresa Wentzler bulletin board which I lurked on but did not post on very much um, and that just completely opened up my whole cross-station world to all these other designers and local needlework stores and you know challenges and stitch alongs and such so that's a really even though it's not framed um, you know it's probably never going to be displayed in my house it's still a really important piece in my stitching journey. 2002, back when the web, back when the internet was still fairly new. I used to go on, uh, this is really dating, um, I used to go on uh, the Usenet group, um, rctn, rec.crafts.textiles.needlework. There were no pictures, it was just text and you know it was just a big chat um again I never posted on there but I just like reading things so that like oh here are the things that you should do if you're entering your needlework into the fair here are all the things that the judges look for and, um you know here's what I'm working on today what is everyone stitching on and things like that so that was really man that was that was so long ago all right Second, Teresa Wensler. This is Stretch. This is a freebie from her website. 
Um, by this time, I had graduated to linen, so this is on a 32 count. Probably cream Belfast from that I bought uh, by Zweigart that I bought from Michaels because um, back then Michaels had some good stuff. This is stretch. He was fun to stitch. He was he was challenging to stitch, but he was fun. Um, and the linen was much less painful than than the Ada on that. This is another piece I started when I was in high school. This is was a freebie from somewhere. Um, it again I was it's just stitched on a black Ada. Um, it's actually kind of pretty. It has some chronic in there, I think. Uh, in the moon and in the reflection for sparkle. I don't think it's gonna show though. Um, but again, this is another piece that I was gonna stitch for a friend and then change my mind about that. By the way, I'm sorry if you can hear this creaking noise. I mean, we're in an old building, so the floors, I can hear my neighbors walking around. And right now they're walking around right above my head. Um, so I apologize if you can hear that, but old building, it happens. All right, this is a sampler that, I think this was in a Brenda Keys book. Um, some like sampler motifs or something like that. Uh, but I stitched the sampler, I just used random colors of DMC. It's not stitched very well, but whatever. Um, I stitched this for a class. Uh, actually, I was taking, <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> you can tell where I got much better at this stitch as I went along. That, that's what it should look like. Um, anyway, I stitched this for a class. I was taking a women's studies class and we could, um, I ended up doing a poster and a hands-on project uh, for a display because I could do that instead of writing an essay and hello if you can cross stitch and make up a poster instead of writing an essay yeah you do it um, I got an A on that project even though the stitching is not um, not gonna win me a blue ribbon or anything All right. this next one is Lizzie Kate Florum Example Boo Sampler. I swear they're trying to come through my ceiling. Um, Florum Example Boo Sampler. This came with the uh, linen, the chart, and this little button that you use for a pumpkin. It's just a little square, carefully placed. And then this was stitched in DMC, and it's so cute. I think this originally said Flora. I was like, no, I'm not putting Flora's name there. I just put initials. I love that. And the linen's this really pretty lavender color. Um, that, that's not terrible. Um, which I never would have thought of for a Halloween design, but it works so well with these colors. It's gorgeous. This other one is also Lizzie Kate. I tend to go through Lizzie Kate phases because they're cute and they're e I love the colors and they're easy to stitch. So this is Joy to the World. Um, also stitched with DMC on the linen that came in the kit. And, okay, this does not have a charm. Um, there's another little piece that goes with this that has a charm. Um, but I have to find a piece of linen for that because it did not come with linen for that design. Uh, and once I stitch that, then I'll be able to um, sell or pass along the chart. So I can move it out of my stash. But I really love this. I need to find a, I want to frame this, I think. Um, yeah. All right, and we are getting to the end of this one because I don't have as many large finishes or medium finishes. Okay, this one.
this one a lot of you will recognize. This is Blackbird Designs. Um, it's Spring Fever, which is their first in the For the Birds series. I just wanted the first one. I didn't want to stitch the rest. So this is on 36 Count Wren by Picture This Plus. Now I did go ahead and buy some more Wren in the Picture This Plus sale in 36 Count just in case I did want to stitch um, more of these designs since they're going to have 12, I think nine or 12 and they're only the number four so i like to you know just to be on the safe side we'll order some i love the color the fabric anyway there's that and finally this is one i cannot wait to have framed i'm gonna um have it framed next year this is <sighs> howling revelry i think by the Primitive Needle. This is in a Just Cross Stitch magazine, uh, which I have passed on my copy, but you can get it. Sometimes you can find it on eBay. Um, sometimes you can find it on a Stash and Load site. Or you can just buy the Just Cross Stitch um, DVD that has the issues, which is what I did. Um, so I was able to give away my physical copy of the magazine because I had already you know, I went ahead and purchased the DVD that had all the years, including this one. Um, but I love it. Look at her purse. She has a pumpkin purse. And the cats are so cute. This is stitched on 40 count vintage country mocha. This was my first time stitching on 40 count. And if you have never stitched on 40 count, I really liked stitching on this fabric. Um, it just feels good. The holes were, it's, it's why right, the holes are easier to see than they were in, I thought they were in others. My camera does not want to focus on these today. Whatever. It was super cute. If you do this, um, the black color, I think it's charcoal maybe, um, get two skeins. Even if you're stitching one over two on 40 count, I was, I think I had enough to do, hmm, I was very, I, I ran out of my first skein and I had to pick up a second skein. So I was very strategic when I knew that I was going to run out. I was very strategic about what I stitched with that skein um, I, so that I wouldn't have dye lot issues. I stitched the witch's hat and her dress. I was able to stitch the entire frame. Yeah, the entire frame. And then I think I had say I think I'd already done one of the cats and I'd done a lot of these. Um, or I done maybe a couple. I done these two, yeah. So I saved this cat, all of these motifs, these cats, and the words. Um, to stitch with the I save those till the end because I figured it would be less obvious if I had to use a skein from a different dye lot there. Um, so you can kind of tell in the two cats that there were some dye lots, but it's not super obvious. But buy two skeins. Just save yourself the hassle and the headache. Buy two skeins. Okay, those are all of my current finishes yeah so um, except for the ones that as I said are put away because they're Christmas ornaments or they go with another decoration um, or obviously the ones that I've given away and, and don't have photos for so um, I'll put together the list of um, projects and where you can find them if they're you know if they're from a magazine or from a book um, or if, if they're not available I'll try to put all that information in the description box below. Um, some of them I, you know, I may also put across the bottom of the screen, depending. Um, but yeah, make sure you get all the information. So I hope you enjoyed looking through everything. It was fun to go down memory lane and remember some of the uh, the things I stitched way back when I was, you know, 18, 19. Just um, gosh, like 15 years ago and. <laughs> Um, yeah, and when it comes to Christmas time, I'll be sure to pull out the rest of my finishes so that you can see things I stitched literally half a lifetime ago. <laughs> 
Um, that'll be fun. Uh, thanks for joining me. I hope you all have a great stitching week. Bye.